Okay, let's play some Zombie Side. So Zombie Side is effectively a cooperative game in which you and the other players are trying to uh, defeat the hordes of zombies that are attacking you and reach the objectives and basically survive the game. Uh, the the rule book of the base game actually comes with 10 different missions that you can choose from at the back of the book. Uh, each of the missions uh, vary in length of uh, gameplay as well as difficulty. So if you have half an hour versus two hours, or if you have an experienced uh, group versus a new group, it, it really helps with identifying which game would best suit you for the, uh, the type style or type of campaign that you're looking to play. What I've done here is I've laid out a, uh, one of the missions at the back, I believe it's number nine, to kind of help with the demonstration today. Uh, but page three of the rule book provides, or big pardon, page four of the rule book provides a very detailed setup guide as to what needs to be uh, established in order to set up your first game of Zombicide. So just a quick overview of the game. There are three phases, uh, starting off with the player phase where each of the players activate their characters and perform different actions. And that's followed by the zombie phase where the zombies then have their opportunity to have actions as well as additional zombies are spawned in on the board. Uh, followed lastly by the end phase, which is basically a bit of a cleanup phase to start uh, the, the next round of gameplay. So at the beginning of the game, all characters start off with the option to perform three different actions. Uh, as they progress through the game and level up, and when they reach the level phase, uh, they will have the opportunity to do an additional action, but we'll talk about that a little bit later on. So when we talk about movement, the board is set up into different zones. So when the uh, when our characters are on the street, like they are currently at the moment, the zones are determined by the the walls of the buildings as well as the, as well as the uh, the zebra crossings. So this is one zone, another zone in this square here, followed by this followed by this zone down here. When the characters have the opportunity to enter a building. Uh, each of the zones are then determined by the the walls of the building as well. So one zone, two zone, three and four zones in this particular building here. When executing a movement phase, again, each character has three different actions. One uh, one movement into a, a an adjacent zone would take up one of those actions. In the uh, in the case of Wanda here, her uh, main first ability is to move into, uh, sorry, two zones per movement action. So Wanda, because she's on roller skates, can move a little bit faster and quicker. So she can move into two different zones, which would only take up one of her actions. When the characters are on the streets, like they are at the moment, they can basically see as far as the eye can see up until the point where they, they, uh, they are unable to see due to a, a wall. Uh, the characters are not able to see diagonally. They can only move and see in uh, in parallel with the with the uh, edges of the board. So at the moment, Ned can see all the way up here, but is not able to see over to the left or right. However, because we have Wanda in the middle here, she can see all the way left and right uh, in in both directions. In the event that a character moves into a building, so if we move into the door here. Uh, Ned can only see into the rooms that are that share a a doorway or an entryway into the in, from the same room that he's currently in. So he can see into the bedroom here as well as to the bathroom, but cannot see into this fourth uh, room over in the corner here. Unless he was to move into one of these other rooms, then he'd be able to see into this uh, into this room here. When a character is outside of a building. Uh, they can only see into the first room. So Wanda would be able to see into the lounge room here, but not into the bathroom where Ned is currently standing. Another action that a player can take is to perform the search action. Uh, so when a character is currently in a building or in a room where there are no zombies, uh, in this case, Ned could perform a search action, which would just mean drawing the top card of the equipment deck here and then placing that equipment into his, uh, into his inventory or discarding it directly straight away. A third action that a player can take is to open up a door. So typically the doors are closed on the board. Uh, in order to open up a door, you would require some type of equipment uh, in your hand that will enable you to break open a door. The way to identify that is uh, with the equipment items, you'll see in this case we have the, the door opening uh, icon on this uh, fire axe. 
So because Wanda has this card in her hand, she could use that fire axe in order to open up this door here. So that would take up an action. You would flip over the door to, to illustrate the uh, now open door. Uh, in addition to that, uh, you'll notice this little symbol here with the, uh, the yellow triangle that indicates a noise token. So we're going to grab one of our noise tokens over here and place that by the door. So that's indicating that there was noise there and zombies are of course attracted to noise. Another action that the players can take is to reorganize their equipment. So you'll notice on their cards here they have three uh, equipment options in the back here as, uh, as cards in reserve and then two cards in hand. So you may have a, a card in the back that you would want to place in front in order to use uh, physically, then you could reorganize those cards to enable you to change out what you're currently using at that point in time or what you want to store in your backpack. Other action options include uh, performing a ranged attack, uh, performing a melee attack, getting in or out of a car, as well as changing your seat position within the vehicle. You'll notice also down here that Ined is in front of an objective token. So in order to activate that objective, that would also require uh, utilizing one of his actions. And last but not least, the player can choose not to perform any action whatsoever. So once all the players have activated their characters, I meant to mention earlier as well, this is our fir uh, first player token, so that determines who actually goes first each round. The next phase is the zombie phase. So let's talk about the different types of zombies that can appear in, in Zombicide. So let's start off with the Walker style zombie. Uh, these zombies are able to only perform one action per round, whether that's a movement or an attack phase. Uh, killing one of these zombies will net you one experience point. The next style of zombie is our runner zombie. Uh, these guys are amped up a little bit more and can uh, actually perform two actions per turn, whether that's moving two zones or attacking twice. Uh, so that's our runner style. Again, killing a runner zombie will net you one experience point. The third style is our fatty zombie. Uh, when the fatty is spawned onto the board game, they automatically also are spawned with two walkers. Uh, in order to kill a fatty, you require a weapon that does three or more damage. Anything below that will, will, only, uh, will only hurt it a little bit, won't actually kill the fatty. Uh, killing a fatty will also net you only one experience point. And last but not least, we have the abomination, which is this big guy here. Uh, there can only be one abomination on the board at one time. Uh, when a, uh, a second abomination is required to be spawned, you would uh, instead spawn a fatty with two walkers. In order to kill an abomination, you require a weapon that does five damage. I believe the only weapon in the game that does that is the Molotov Cocktail. Killing the Abomination will net you five experience points. Okay, so let's talk about the, the zombie phase. Let's move some of these zombies onto the board here. Uh, so with the zombie phase, the obviously the zombies only have one action that they can take. Oops. Uh, whether that's a movement or an attack phase, uh, each, each zombie phase starts off with the attack phase uh, in the event that a zombie is in the same zone as a uh, as a player. So in this case, because the zombie is in the same zone as Ned here, uh, the zombie would actually attack Ned, uh, taking one of his equipment pieces and then providing him a wound token, which will effectively take up one of Ned's uh, available card slots on his character sheet. In the event that not, Ned got a second wound uh, card on his player sheet that will eliminate him from the game. Uh, in the event that two players are in the uh, same room as a zombie, uh, the the wounded tokens would then actually be split between the players. The zombies never miss, they always attack and always apply a wound card to one of the players within that same zone. So in the event that the zombie can see a player, then they will move into the direction of, of that player in view. Alternatively, if they can't see any players in sight, then they will move to the loudest area on the board. So in this case, we only have one uh, noise token on the board. So if Wanda was in a different area, each of the zombies would move towards that noise token. 
Once all the zombies have performed their action, it is then the time to spawn additional zombies onto the board. So the spawn areas are determined by these red uh, tokens here. So on this particular map, we have three locations where additional zombies can be spawned. In order to identify what type of zombies or the number of zombies that are spawned, we use this deck here. So we would draw uh, a card for each location. So in, in the case of this, if we start here, in the event that one of the players actually reaches level 7, which is the yellow section, in this case, we would actually spawn three walkers into that location. And then we progress into the orange, where it gets a little bit more difficult. And then finally, the red section at level 43 uh, is the most difficult type of encounter that will be spawned onto the board. As uh, as we progress through the uh, the levels, you'll notice that the uh, characters or different... different uh, actions or abilities will open up for each of the characters. Uh, so you'll notice in the blue section each of the characters have, or in this case Ned has the ability to do one free search action. When he reaches the level, uh, the yellow section he'll uh, gain the ability to perform one additional action, so four actions as opposed to the three actions per turn. When he reaches the orange section he'll have the choice of either an additional one die when performing a ranged attack or one free combat action. And then lastly, at level 43, he can choose from one of the, the, these three options as well. Where you have the choice, you would indicate your specific choice by placing one of these yellow tokens next to it to indicate uh, your choice. So going back to our spawning of uh, additional zombies, because all of our characters are still in the blue section, we would, we would spawn two, uh, two walkers in that section there. We would draw another card for this uh, the spawn point down here. Oh, phew, no zombies are spawned down in this section. And lastly, over to the left here, we will spawn one walker, which I don't currently have any more over there, so I'll bring this one over here. The third and final phase is the, uh, the end phase, or the cleanup phase, where we would remove all of the noise tokens from the board, move them to the side, the first player token will move to the person to the to the left, and then we start with the player phase again, activating the survivors and performing the uh, the selected actions. Okay, before we move into combat, let's talk about the different type of equipment cards that are available. So, if we look at the pistol card here, the uh, the different icons on the card provide different information. So, in the event that you were performing a uh, a ranged attack with this pistol the we talked about the the number of damage or the amount of damage that needs to be done in order to uh, defeat certain zombies for example the fatty requires a damage of two in this case the pistol will perform one damage so this pistol will be able to successfully kill a walker or a runner uh, without any without any issues so this icon down here indicates the range or the uh, the minimum or maximum number of zones that the weapon will actually reach a zombie. So in this case, when utilizing the uh, the pistol, the uh, there can be zero to one zones between you and the zombie for the actual weapon to uh, have a successful hit against the zombie. The uh, the second icon here indicates the number of dice that need to be rolled. And then in order for the uh, weapon to be successful, you would require a four or more uh, die result based on the number of dice that you rolled. Uh, when utilizing this pistol, again, you will generate a noise token at the location that you use it. So you, uh, every time you would fire the weapon, you would have to place one of your uh, noise tokens at your feet. Uh, this icon up here indicates that you can actually dual wield pistols. So in the event that you had a second pistol within your reserve, you could have both pistols uh, in the front and then actually use both pistols at the same time. Let's take a look at a melee type weapon. So we've got the baseball bat here. Uh, when utilizing the baseball bat, it doesn't require, it doesn't generate any type of noise. So it is a silent weapon. Uh, again, uh, the range here is zero, so the uh, the zombie must be in the same zone as you. You would roll one die, and a successful hit would require a three or more die result. Again, the baseball bat will only generate one uh, damage, so again, it would successfully kill a a walker 
or a runner, but not a fatty or an abomination. One important element to consider is when you are attacking uh, with a ranged weapon from a distance, uh, you don't actually get to choose which target you'll be hitting first in the event of a su 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 sorry, successful roll. So in this case here, if Ned is using his pistol into the room next door, the actual uh, ranged weapon uh, follows a targeting priority order. So uh, the, uh, the actual hit will initially perform damage to firstly any survivors or other characters in the room first, followed by any walkers, then fatties, and then followed by runners. So unfortunately in this case, if Ned was to use his pistol, he would actually first uh, hit Wanda uh, prior to uh, hitting the, the walker here. So we would want to make sure that uh, Wanda moves out of the room prior to Ned leashing his pistol into the room next door. So definitely one consideration when playing this game is the, the targeting priority. And that's really outlined on page 17 of the rule book in, in great depth there. Um, but it definitely will come into play quite a bit when, as you progress through your campaigns. One last thing I meant to mention earlier as well, uh, there is one other time when additional zombies can be spawned onto the board, and that's when a door is open to a building. So say for example, uh, Wanda uses her fire axe over here to knock open this door. She does so. As soon as the door opens, we then use the uh, the deck of cards then to uh, well, we draw a, a number of cards from that deck, depending on the number of rooms, to, to determine how many zombies appear in each of those rooms. So say, for example, we start with this room here, we draw a card, we're still in the blue section, so we would spawn one walk into that room. Go to the next room, draw a card, in this case we would spawn two walkers into that room, and so on and so on. And that then determines which zombies then appear in those rooms as soon as you open up the door. So as I was uh, deciding which board game I should uh, present next, I thought, well, it is October. October means Halloween. Let's do Zombicide. And I think it was a good choice. This is uh, another favorite game of mine, another cooperative game. Again, I don't get it to the table too often, unfortunately. It's, it's been probably at least a year now since I've had a chance to, to have a game of this. Uh, but after you know laying laying it out today on the table and playing around with it and, and going through the instructional video, it's uh, re-energized my uh, my love for this game. Uh, great source of replayability with this game. You know, obviously we have the the dynamic board here, the different components that you can kind of add to the game. The I have not played all of the different missions that come in the uh, the rule book. Uh, I've only played a few, but of those that I have, I definitely have not been disappointed. Each of the missions, each of the campaigns come with a, a different set of uh, objectives and special rules, which are clearly outlined in the book. And I went over to the um, to the Guillotine Games website. They've got a ton more campaigns that they've published on there for you to try and test out as well. Uh, I only own the base game, but I believe there are something like six different expansions that come with the game and uh, like gaming night kits and a whole different variety of different boards you can add as well. Uh, and what's to stop you from creating your own campaigns as well? You know, there are so many different components that come in the box that I haven't really put on display here that you can kind of play around with and create your own campaigns. Uh, like I, I didn't really go too much depth with regards to the cars that you can actually drive around and, uh, you know, kill zombies that way, which, you know, the, the rule book would definitely go into more depth there for you. In my research uh, to identify ways that we can win the game, uh, bearing in mind winning means the team or the group collectively winning, not yourself directly, because there really aren't any victory points associated to the game. Uh, I, I came across a really good source of information for, that was uh, posted by wide.com a few years ago. So I, I thought I might share some of that information to kind of help you in, or help you in the group to achieve the objectives and win the game. I guess to start off, you know, the more players that you have playing the mission or the more survivors, uh, it's definitely going to make, make each of the missions a little bit more easier because you have more people there to kind of balance out these uh, wound tokens and, you know, perform those searches, find the better equipment and defeat the hordes of zombies that are approaching you. One of the key elements is to play together. 
you know, don't split up the teams or don't split up the group. Try and stay as one team collectively working through the map. It would definitely help you along the way as well. And although zombie killing is a lot of fun, avoid being wrapped up in that, that mode of just going out and killing all the zombies because ultimately you have an objective to meet in each of the campaigns. So working together to meet that objective and, uh, and sticking together is, is ultimately what's going to get you through this game. So the wired.com article actually gave three survival tips, which I thought were great tips to, to consider when playing the game as well. Uh, number one, level up simultaneously. Uh, you may find that if players start to split up or you're not uh, allocating the kills evenly, you may have one player you know, raking up all these uh, kill experience points and, and, and experience points from completing the objective tokens as well, which could leave the other players behind in experience and that's going to only make them struggle as they, you know, approach those zombies uh, throughout the game. So try and, you know, try and keep that leveling on a uh, leveling up on a on an evil playing field as you as you play through the campaign. Survival tip number two was I thought was a, a great a great tip, and that's to try and open up the doors early on and and, and quickly, uh, remembering that as soon as you open up a door, that's going to populate that building with the zombies and if you can do that early on what that means is you could potentially you'll have more control over to over what zombies are uh are populating the buildings because if you can do it early on it's going to mean uh less difficult hordes to populate those areas with plus if you can take advantage of like wanda here with her special ability of being able to move quickly around the board with her two moves per action, it, it will enable you to kind of go around to each building, open up those doors, populate those buildings, and then, you know, um, meet your objectives as needed. Survival tip number three, another important one is, if you are going last in the sequence of players, get a gun. Uh, because if you're the last player to, um, you know, have to defeat a set of monsters. You don't want to go into a building with a melee weapon and not successfully kill all of those zombies in the same room or the same zone as you, because the very next turn is that zombie phase and those zombies are only going to draw or turn their attention to you. And remember, you can only afford two wound tokens um, to continue through the game. As soon as you get that second wound token, you're basically out. Um, so I guess if you can have a ranged weapon that you can start, you know, killing off those zombies from a distance. If you are that last player, it's going to avoid those, avoid you uh, finishing off your turn in the same zone as a zombie or a number of zombies. That's only going to, you know, potentially kill you the next round. So be careful of that. So that's Zombie Side. Highly recommend it. Great game for this Halloween season uh, or any time of year, really. Um, but uh, yeah, if you haven't tried it out, give it a go and uh, highly recommend it. Uh, please um, share this video with anyone that you think may enjoy it. Subscribe to the channel and uh, I will speak to you next time. Thanks very much. Bye.